Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Ask a Cleaning Expert. I'm your host, Melissa Homer, Chief Cleaning Officer of Mike Farber Wholesale. I'm a professional cleaning expert with over 20 years of experience in the residential professional cleaning industry and commercial cleaning industry and commercial chemical manufacturing industry. So I can come and help you in any way you need. I am here to answer your questions live. We talk about anything from how to get hard water stains out of your toilet to how to undo any laundry messes you've made to advice on your uh, cleaning business and how to get the most out of it. So whether you're a professional side or home consumer side, I am here to support you. Every week we give you a theme so that you can start to build your cleaning knowledge and hopefully uh, share in our uh, knowledge and expertise here at Market Harbor Wholesale. But do not let that theme stop you. The theme is here to give us just some anchoring. But if you have questions that are completely off topic, that's all right. I have ADHD and I'm happy to bounce between topics and get back on track. So this week's theme, we're talking about cleaning fails. When you tried to take care of something in your home and you screwed up and you scratched it up and you stained it up and you messed it up good. And you're thinking... I need to replace this thing I was supposed to be cleaning. What do I do now? What you do is you watch this show and you bookmark it and you put it aside for later because if you haven't made these mistakes yet, you will eventually and these are the fixes you need. And when your friend tells you, oh God, I did this to my house, you're going to afford them this video because these are the solutions you need. And most importantly, you're going to also pop onto microfiberwholesale.com and use your Fix Fails 15 promo code to get yourself 15% off microfiber so you have the tools you need ready and waiting for the next time you make oopsie and get it fixed. As I give you this advice, by the way, I'm also going to try to make sure I cover with you how to avoid having these mistakes happen in the first place. As the expert for a large residential cleaning franchise for over 18 plus years, I had to become an expert in fixing things because no matter how highly trained our employees were, mistakes happen. Professional cleaning is a human service. I don't care how expert you are. At some point, you're going to make an oopsie. So my job was being the fixer for the franchise. Everyone would call me with, oh no, our maids scratched this dining room table. Oh no, our maids knocked over this bottle of... um, chemical on this customer's uh, marble counters. What do I do? So I have built this knowledge from real life uh, cleaning disasters, and I have fixed thousands of dollars worth of damage across country for years. So I'm happy to help everybody out. But again, if you have questions that have nothing to do with this topic, that's quite all right. And I see some are actually already starting to fill in here. So I want to make sure I get to them. But I'm going to kind of give you guys treats of of fixes one at a time throughout the show. So hopefully it keeps you watching longer. As well as make sure I keep uh, attending to these live questions. So the first shameless plug I'm going to give you on things you can fix that you didn't realize you could. First fix, when you scratched up your shower and tub fiberglass and acrylic surround by using too aggressive a product. I see this all the time. People have bad hard water, bad soap scum. It's gross. And they're like, oh, I'm going to get myself a really aggressive scrubbing pad to solve this problem. And they get themselves one of those uh, green scrubbers from 3M. I call those the scrubbers of doom, the heavy duty scrubbers. Do not bring those anywhere near your fiberglass or acrylic surrounds in your shower. They will scratch the crud out of them. Don't do it. But inevitably, some of you are going to try. And then you're going to scratch the heck out of your shower and go, what do I do now? And the answer is gel gloss. Gel gloss is an old school formula that is going to save your bacon. Gel gloss, fiberglass, polish and protectant is going to hide all that scratch up work you did. Now, mind you, if it's finger catching level scratches, it's not going to solve that. But anything short of that, any dulling, scratching, oopsie, I scrubbed too hard stuff, or you just have an old worn out fiberglass or acrylic surround that just looks sad and old gel gloss, fiberglass polish, chef's kiss works great. Polish is in easy. Um, and most importantly, it protects you from building up all that hard water and sco- soap scum you were scratching at in the first place. So that'll be easier to clean going forward and you'll be less tempted to destroy your poor shower. Um, so 
that's my first fix for you. You've screwed up your shower in a surround. You want gel gloss to uh, hide your oopsie and make it look pretty again. And to avoid it going forward, I'm going to shamelessly plug uh, one of our products that I know is a huge fix for this. And where is it? Here we go. I want to point out the contour scrubber. So the contour scrubber is our answer to tubs and showers. What this tool does is it's a black flexible industrial grade rubber holder that allows you to put on any light duty utility pad, any magic eraser sponge that you want, on, or we even have a scrubbing mop pad you can put on, whatever tool you prefer. The flexible head allows you to scrub that acrylic surround and to scrub that tub with an extension pole and a nice light duty pad that gives you the strength of the scrubbing from your body as opposed to using something really scratchy. When you use the contour scrubber, you're going to be less tempted to use an overly aggressive tool. You can use something lighter, like a normal, uh, you know, non-light uh, duty pad, and it will get everything clean. You'll have enough strength to scrub without using one of those heavy duty green pads and scratching things up. So shameless plug, if you want to save your back and neck and shoulders and save your poor surfaces, get yourself a contour scrubber. Now let me get into a question here. I see a question from... Lynetta, so nice to have you here. What is the best thing you use to clean toilets? Great question. So here's the deal with toilets. If you're maintaining them, honestly, they're really easy. Why people ask about them is because they wait too long. If you are waiting till the ring is really badly built up from hard water and you're trying to scrub at that with a little white uh, brush that they give you, it's not going to work. Um, if you want to keep toilets easy, cleaning, friendly, you got to clean them regularly with the soap that's appropriate for the type of water you've got. If you live in an area with hard water, you need an acidic based toilet bowl cleaner. Um, this is a mistake I see all over the industry for home consumers specifically. Everyone thinks bleach is strong. Bleach is better. I have these dark, ugly rings in my toilet. I need bleach, bleach, bleach to make things white, white, white. Well, this is the big mistake. Bleach does nothing for hard water. It actually makes the iron and rust stains worse. Bleach is an oxidizer. It can whiten dyes, but it can't make rock unrock. Uh, the mineral deposits you're seeing are minerals. And so if you're seeing iron deposits, they're making that blue greeny color or that bright orangey color because it's oxidizing rust on the iron deposits. Bleach can't unrust iron. It actually makes it rustier because the bleach is an oxidizer and it makes that iron bloom and turn even brighter. And it feathers and actually bonds harder to the toilet. It makes it harder to scrub off. So the best thing you can use to clean your toilet is if you're in a hard water country, you need some sort of uh, acid-based product. Usually Barkeeper's Friend is my go-to because uh, you can use it in your tub, in your shower, in your toilet. It's easy peasy. Uh, but if you prefer a traditional squeeze bottle, there's a, a number of them out there that you want to look for hard water acid-based products. That's going to save you a lot of aggravation. If you do that frequently, then any old fun basic toilet brush will make you very happy. But if you've let it go too long and your toilet's you know, really wrecked and there's a lot of buildup on there, the thing you want is called a pummy stone. Let me see if I have a link to that. I think I do. Let me just double check. If not, I'll just tell you verbally. Well, first, I'll make sure I give you a link to uh, the barkeeper's friend. I'll just pop that up there so it shoots you a link in the comments. Uh, so barkeeper's friend. And let me see if I do have the pummy stick. If not, I'll tell you verbally. Um, Huh, I thought I had a pummy stick link. Okay, my apologies. I will tell you verbally that the thing you want is called the pummy stick. P-U-M-I-E. <laughs> it's pumice stone. No, really, it's a piece of rock. I know that sounds crazy, but it's wonderful in bad toilets. So if you've got a bad toilet with a bunch of, you know, hard water crust or rust stains, that pummy stick will scrape that off the toilet without scratching the toilet. I promise you. Everyone sees this stick and they freak out going, Mel, there's no way I can use this in my toilet. It's a brick. I'm going to scratch it. You're not gonna. I promise you. Professional cleaners have been using pummy sticks in toilets for generations and it has saved your toilet so many times over. You just have to make sure you pre-clean the toilet well because, you know, 
who is not your friend, just to get everything cleaned and disinfected, flush a couple times, make sure everything's good and clean, and then get a nice long set of dishwasher uh, gloves and your pummy stick and go ham on that ring and it will scrape even your worst, saddest toilet nightmares right off. Um, oh, you asked another question. Let me make sure I answer here. Uh, does microfiber harbor bacteria? It does if you wash it incorrectly. So let's talk about that. Um, there's a lot of myth and legend about proper microfiber care, and I want to set this record straight right now. So any fabric, whether it's cotton or microfiber or wool or whatever you've got, once it's got food for germs in it and water for germs to drink, it will harbor germs by definition. Whether it's wool or silk or cashmere or microfiber, once there's food, water, and a place for the germs to hang out, they will party at any fabric. So long as you leave them there, you have to launder them out. Um, there's products out there that do promise they can reduce the amount of bacteria load in fabric. Um, there are treatments out there. Uh, we happen to have one of some of our commercial towels that you can access and get. But I want to be very clear about what that difference is. So all the products you see that talk about how they're going to reduce the bacteria load in the towels, they take hours to work. They are not the same as laundering your towels. I won't name names, but there's a couple of companies out there selling microfiber talking all day long about their silver ions and silver in their towels that make them, you know, antibacterial and antimicrobial. That silver takes hours. We're talking six plus hours to kill the germs that happen to be resting on that silver. So yes, will that towel be less stinky overnight? Sure. Is it any safer to clean with after you've cleaned and grab it again? No. Um, if you are using it to mop up raw chicken juice, it needs to be washed. You can't just take that and go rub down your dining room table going, well, it has this magic silver in it. It'll be fine. No, it, that's not fine. Okay. It takes hours for that to work. So do not rely on that. The only value, like we have the same thing additive in some towels for us as well, where we have a antimicrobial additive. The only value in that additive is to help reduce the overall odor problem of towels that are being left out before laundering. So if you're a commercial operation and you uh, have towels that are coming back from the field that take like 24 hours before they get into your laundry cycle, they are not going to be any more safe to clean with. It's not going to be, oh, I'm gonna, I can lick these towels now even though they're dirty. It's going to keep the bacterial load at bay so you can get them in the laundry machine before they stink to high heck. That's all it does for you. Okay? Um, so in terms of does microfiber harbor bacteria? Any fabric that's unwashed will harbor bacteria as long as it's wet and so long as it's got food. So if you don't want to harbor bacteria, you wash it and you let it dry. Um, if you want to have a towel that you hang around, like your, your kitchen, I call it, a, forgive me, I'm half Jewish, we call it the shmata towel. Uh, that you learned your Yiddish for the day. That's the little towel you have hanging around when you want to clean things. It's okay to have a shmata towel. There's your Yiddish for the day. But you've got to use it. Rinse and wring it out a little bit with some dish soap. Get it clean enough that's clean. Wring it out well and hang it single thickness so it dries as fast as it can. If you've got it flapped over your sink in this big mushy ball, it's not going to dry very quickly. There's not going to be enough airflow. And that's when you're going to have a stinky towel. And you're going to go, ew. And you're going to throw it in the laundry like you should. Frankly, in my opinion, I hate when people have this long-term schmata towel type of thing because they get gross because no one's diligent enough. That's why you just buy a stack of good quality microfiber. We sell the rainbow of beautiful colored microfiber and they want launder 300 plus washes. There's no reason not to throw them in the wash. Um, personally, what I do is I have a little extra basket that I keep to the side uh, where I put my dirty microfiber. Uh, I let it dry and I throw it in there so that it's not getting too nasty in that thing because I want it dry. And when I have enough to run a cycle, I run a cycle. Um, you can run a mini wash. You know, you don't have to run a full load if you don't want to. But run microfiber with itself or other non-wovens. Do not run it with cotton. You'll fill it full of lint. You don't want to do that. And you can wash it on warm water and warm dry. Not hot, warm. The key here is you want to keep it under 140 degrees in that dryer. As long as you can keep it at that under the 140 degree mark, you will not melt the plastic. If you leave it in there for an hour in the dryer, 
that will kill every virus, every bacteria and germ you're worried about and sanitize those towels. Um, if you air dry and you don't do a thorough enough job, you can end up with some bacteria somewhere in there if it's still damp. When you put it in the dryer that 140 degrees, that kills everything. So if you're worried about bacteria in your towels, whether they're cotton, whether they're microfiber, whether they're uh, any other material, I don't care what, as long as it's been in the dryer for up to an hour, it's actually a minimum of an hour, not up to, a minimum of an hour at 140 degrees, that will kill bacteria and viruses. Um, heat is your friend. People use like steam to kill things very quickly. Longer exposures to lower heat will get you the same effect. It will cook and kill bacteria and viruses and give you back your safety. You do not want to use high heat and steam and all that with microfiber because you'll end up melting the synthetic fibers that you paid for that trap dirt so beautifully. So I hope that answers all your questions. Let's see here. I got another question. Anastasia is asking, can you provide tips for dealing with unpleasant odors that persist despite cleaning efforts? Oh, great question. All right. So let's talk stink. Um, <coughs> uh, it is a, uh, it's a tough issue because there's a lot of layers to it, but I'll try to keep it tight. If you are smelling foul odors, nine times out of 10, it's bacteria farting. Sorry, I'm going to say it out loud. Uh, what you are smelling is that there's still organic matter somewhere in the thing that you thought you cleaned and the bacteria have found it and they are eating and they are farting and they are multiplying. And that is your smell. I know it's gross. I'm sorry, but welcome to real life and cleaning. Um, so you either didn't get all the junk out yet, or you didn't kill all the bacteria yet. If it still smells bad more times than not. Now there are some things that just persistently smell bad. And we'll get to those in a second, but eight times out of 10, you just didn't get it thorough enough clean. Um, in that case, the product I recommend is Odoban, O-D-O-B-A-N. I don't know if I have a link to that one, but I will shamelessly plug it to the cows come home. So hopefully I do have it somewhere. If not, I'll just, oh yes, I do have it. Oh, good. Odoban, O-D-O-B-A-N. It is the killer of all things that stink. Um, it is a uh, antibacterial, viral side, uh, fungal side, all the sides. It kills it all. And if you just follow the directions, instructions in the back of the bottle, it'll tell you how much to dilute it. You can use it on carpets. You can use it on floors. You can use it on any dumb thing that stinks. But it's only going to work if the thing's clean. So I'm going to shamelessly plug, get better mops and towels. When you are cleaning, if you have not done a thorough enough job cleaning, there's going to be food left over for the germs to multiply and come back. Um, things like our professional mop. If you're cleaning gross floors, you need a better mop. If you get up all the dirt and germs, it's not going to smell so much anymore. <clears throat> the other thing that may be causing your problem is you may not have properly sealed your surfaces. And this is a whole separate kettle of fish, but if you've got, uh, uh, forgive me, you've got the uh, lovely young boys in your home with aim issues. And so the area around the toilet and the whole bathroom now smells like a, a, you know, a, a trip to Fenway Park. Um, and it, it's gross. That isn't because you're not mopping the floor. It's usually because the urine has actually soaked into the grout. Most people's grout is not sealed as well as it should be. When you get grout, it's supposed to be sealed by your contractor and often they skip it because uh, it requires them to come back after they've done the install and most of them are too lazy to do it. So a lot of people have completely unsealed grout or they got it sealed years ago and forgotten to reseal it so their seal's worn off. If your seal's worn off, things like urine can cut into that, you know, uh, worn off sealant and get into the grout. And now you've got your crystals uh, forming in that grout. And even though you mop the top, that's going to be there providing plenty of smell and nastiness for as long as you <laughs> leave it there. And the only way to solve that is to actually deep clean it out and then seal it properly. Um, there's a professional product called uh, Clorox urine remover. I know, sorry, people, we're talking real life cleaning here. We're going to talk about icky stuff. Um, that's a wonderful deep cleaner that's specifically designed to dissolve those urate crystals that are, that form in when you get, uh, soaked in, uh, grout lines, that persistent smell will now come out, use a good scrub brush, get it good and clean, um, use a good mop, mop it all up. Once it's good and clean and you're sure you've gotten all the smelly thing out, or if it's just uh, any other generic bad smell, it's not specifically urine, 
wash that floor well and use the Odaban product. Again, follow the instruction in the back to clean and kill any of the bacteria that's just giving you that funky, nasty smell or moldy smell. Kill everything good. And once you feel like everything's good and dead, go ahead, let it dry out bone dry. This is an important thing we're talking about with any sealant. If you're sealing something in, it's permanent, which means if you've got moisture in the floor, you're sealing in the moisture permanently, which means everything's going to get all dissolved and sad because it's trapped wet soaking forever. Ew, don't do that. So be careful. Get that floor as clean as you can. Get rid of as much smell as you can. Deep scour the heck out of that thing and let it get bone dry, like 48 hours dry, like run a fan in there dry, like windows open and get it dry, dry. Once it's dry, dry, you can apply sealant. And 511 impregnating sealer is probably one of my favorites in terms of being easy for home consumers to handle because it will go on the tile and the grout. A lot of products I see out there, they require you to sit there with some sad little paintbrush, painting grout lines. No one's, ain't nobody got time for that as they say, okay? You're going to use this product because you can just use the applicator and go over the whole floor. The granite stone, the tie, ceramic tile, the marble, the whatever you've got, and the grout lines, you just go right across the whole thing, and you will now be sealing both tile and grout. And once it's sealed, you don't have that problem of deep-seated stains and food and residue and organic matter anymore, so now you don't get the stink. Because when you go to mop properly, everything's just sitting on the surface, the soap clings to it, lifts in the water, a good mop, like our microfiber wholesale mop. Uh, grabs and sucks up that dirt and whisks it away and you get a truly clean surface every single time. Easy peasy. When you don't have sealants, all the dirt you lifted with the soap and the water naturally sinks to the lowest point of gravity, which is all your grout lines, which is why your grout's disgusting. You're not at bad at mopping. Your floor soap isn't bad. It's gravity. As soon as the surfactants lift the dirt and soap and everything off the floor into the water stream, it's going to start sinking almost immediately to that lowest point of gravity. So if you don't have sealants on your grout line, they're go all that dirt and bacteria and urine and junk is just going to go right down to that bottom of that grout line. And instead you have to start scrubbing it out and soaking it out and extracting it out. And it's a lot of work. So sealants are absolutely a much easier way to solve that problem. Um, I will also shamelessly, shamelessly plug because I can... Uh, where is our product on here? Here we go. I will shamelessly plug, if you've got grout lines that have been giving you heck, you want the Mucho Mop pads. Mucho Mop is your friend. Um, let me see if I got one here. Yes, I do. This is your answer to sad grout lines. See this thing here? All these nice little fingers. These are 100% chenille microfiber. 100% microfiber, really high quality stuff too. So, it can get right into those grout lines, pretending this is grout here, okay? And scrub everything out every time you clean. Now that doesn't mean you don't have to seal. You still need to get those sealants because again, grout is usually you know, a good quarter half inch thick and if it's porous, all the dirt's gonna go right to the bottom. If you seal it and you use this, your tile, floor, nightmares, and stink are gone for good. Uh, much easier. Let's see here. I suspect Barkeeper's friend won't help with this, but how might I get blood out of a gray office chair? Face palm. Oh, I'm sorry, Crystal. So let's talk uh, stains. Uh, first things first, when it comes to any stain, the faster you address it, the happier you are. I don't know how long ago this stain was, uh, but it will be harder if it's been sitting there for a long time because blood does stain. Um, Quick advice on stains. One, blot them up as fast as you can. Even if you don't have much around, you'd be surprised how many things are great stain fighters if you work fast. So, you know, you give yourself a paper cut working in your office and you hit your chair and, oh no, I've gotten blood on my gray office chair. As soon as you can, go over to the kitchenette and their bathroom in that office space, grab a whatever you grab, I don't care if it's a napkin, and a little bit of dish soap and start to clean up that stain as fast as you can before the protein set you're gonna have a much easier time getting it off. The big thing with blood is a protein stain is you don't wanna get it hot. Uh, you don't have to worry about that with an office chair because you're not gonna be throwing that through the wash. But for anyone with their clothing, do not throw bloodied things through the hot wash cycle, okay? 
uh, that is going to cook the blood and make it um, seize and harder to get out of everything. You always want to treat the stain before you throw it in the wash cycle because the heat will set it even harder. Um, so the next thing that you want to look at is you want stain fighters intended for the job if you have availability. But again, that's if they're there already. Um, one of the things I find is that people, uh, people make a mistake in cleaning it that great is the enemy of good. Okay. If you are waiting for some product to come in the mail three days and you're leaving this stain to sit there till the magic product comes, you've made that stain way worse than if you just tried something not as good today. The longer it sits, the more trouble you're in. So if you have a stain, honestly, my favorite thing to suggest to people is your detergent. Tide detergent is a wonderful pretreat if you get it on there fast enough. So, oops, I got that on the chair. And it's my home office. I'm going to go run into my laundry room, get myself a little Tide, and dab it on there right now. Because straight Tide is an incredible pretreat. Does an awesome job. And I can give a little scrub with a wonderful, nice plush microfiber towel. Got to plug it. They do a wonderful job because microfiber grabs and holds on to dirt and soils and holds it in. If you're using cotton towels for anything, just stop. And it doesn't, and obviously I love our microfiber. It should be our microfiber. But honestly, any microfiber is better than cotton. Cotton only holds like 60% of the dirt and germs it swipes by and it loses a third of them. It drops out a full third as you work with it and continue to wet and use it. Microfiber holds on up to 99% of dirt and germs without any redeposit. The really tiny fibers create friction so the dirt and germs and bacteria that get shoved in there can't slide out. Cotton is these big, juicy, round, slippery fibers, so the dirt does go in there kind of, sort of, and then falls right back down. So that's why cleaning with cotton is so frustrating, is because it's not holding on to half the stuff you're doing with it. When you use microfiber, it pulls everything out and it holds on to it until you put it in the laundry, or you hand wash it and you actively scrub with some soap to get it out. So, um, back to the main question of that office chair. If you've got Tide in the house, go use it today. You got shout in the house. Also, we'll do that great today. Take a little right on there, scrubby scrubby with a little warm water, and rinse well. Do not leave soap behind. It's my other big thing with laundry stains is people leave soap behind and then wonder why the thing's dark. Soap attracts dirt. If it, you haven't gotten it all out, it will attract what you sitting on it, your hand, your body oils, and now you'll get this brown stain because your poor soap is cleaning everything around it because it's got nothing better to do with itself because it's bored. You got to rinse it out and blot well if it's a, a office chair. You don't want that foam sitting there wet because that can start to get moldy and nasty and not fun. So uh, blot, 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 squeeze, 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 get all the water you can out, stick a fan pointing at it, dry it good. And all the stains should come out again with Shout or Tide or any of those products will work just fine if you get it fast. Um, I don't know if I have the link to it right now. I don't think I do. Um, let me see. Well, there are some other stain fighters I enjoy. Um, I think it's called Stainex. I just want to make sure I get the name right real quick for you. Um, let's me double check the name of this product here. Yes, I was right. Stainex remover. Great. I am happy. All right. So Stainex, let me see if I can get the link real quick. Yes, I can. All right. So if you have bad laundry stains and you want to have it ready for next time, the product here is called Stain X. And I just threw that link in the comments. Um, it is by the Sweat X line. They make uh, detergents and stain products for the sports athletic world industry. So basically think of... Uh, baseball players with all the clay and the blood and the grass and the everything. So any of you moms with soccer kids and baseball kids and football kids, get you some Stain-X. Have the bottle at the ready. Trust me, it lives in my laundry room and I ain't playing. Uh, that is one of my go-to bottles when my kids come home with whatever grass stains, clay stains, blood stains they've done to their sad, um, um, uh, uniforms. It, it saves you. So um, if you want to have it ready for the next time, I definitely recommend 
having that uh, Stainex product ready. But again, don't wait three, four days to get Stainex for the stain that's on your office chair right now. You want to address it fast. Uh, let's see here. Let's see here. I got another question coming in. Any advice on how to clean Softex leather car seats? Uh, kiddo threw up and despite it's cleaning, it still smells. Oh, I am so sorry. <laughs> I feel this one in my soul as a mama too. Um, so here's the thing. Car seats are their own drill. And I, 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 ooh, I'm going to tell you, you're not going to like your answers. So there are all kinds of rules around washing of car seats. They'll even tell you on the manuals, you're not supposed to use anything other than the gentlest of dish soaps, maybe to clean the straps and stuff. Cause they don't want any, de anything to degrade the strength of those straps and ensure that, uh, they are holding at full strength if the kid gets in an accident. So car seats, frankly, are not made to be cleaned. Well, they're kind of jerks about the whole thing. Sometimes they do allow you to get the cover off effectively without having to mess with the straps. If you have one of those models, that's great. Um, but make sure you are, whatever soaps you are trying, you're keeping it off the straps uh, because we want to make sure those keep full strength. Um, if it is a fake leather pleathery type product that also kind of restricts some of your options, you really can't go ham and scour the way you normally would with a fabric because that pleathery plastic product there is not going to like the deep rubbing action. So you're going to have to be gentle with it as well. Um, if the, you'll have to read what the manufacturer says for this leather product, I would read their manual so they, cause they know what they gave you. If it's actually able to be laundered or not, if they're like spot clean only, and this can't be really cleaned, you may be kind of, you know, screwed for lack of better terminology. Um, but, um, if they do say it's launderable, it is a fake sort of pleathery leather that is washable. Odaban is amazing and has saved me. I will specifically say from, uh, not from, uh, vomit, but, uh, uh, knocked over baby bottles in a hot car seat in August. Oh, it was the worst. I've never smelled anything like it in my life. Uh, one of my worst cleaning nightmares <laughs> made by my own daughter. Um, she managed to like pull apart her baby bottle while I was trying to drive her to daycare. Uh, <laughs> anyhow, um, I can say Odaban saved the day, uh, but my car seat was fabric, not leather. So I can't say for sure it's going to work in your scenario, but if it is a washable material, Odaban is going to help you tremendously there. But I would double check with your manufacturer as to how leather is leather, because if it's actually real leather, you certainly don't want to be soaking it in Odaban. Um, but if it is a washable, pleathery product thing that is allowed to be washed, go ahead with the Odaban. Um, if it is actual real leather, uh, my favorite leather cleaner is the Lexol line. So Lexol makes a wonderful leather cleaning product line. Um, so the deal here is Lexol was originally made for car care, uh, but they will work on any leather thing you've got and they are tremendous. Um, so whether it is your um, leather shoes or a leather purse or a leather couch or a leather anything, um, I would highly, highly recommend uh, the Lexol product line mostly because it's fast. I'll throw that link in the comments as well. Um, if this is real leather, it'll get it as clean as it can. It may not solve vomit odor. I'm frankly, that's going to be toughy. But if it's just getting the leather clean, Lexol's got you. It cleans deeply and fast and dries quickly. And their conditioner soaks in in less than 15 minutes. If you've ever tried anything like that leather honey product, we have to let it sit there overnight and you can't use your couch. It sucks. I mean, it, the results are nice, but you you lose access to the thing you're trying to use for like hours. With Lexol, this is minutes. It was made for professional car care. They know you got a quick turnaround. So Lexol is made for real life. Trust me, go get it. Uh, let's see here. Uh, let's see. Uh, I got some comments going back and forth here. I'm trying to read what's going on here. Uh, somebody agree they love Oda Band. Love that. <laughs> Yay. Um, let's see this question here. 
I have one more. Does your microfiber mop sweep floors too or no? Great question. And the answer is yes. Um, this is actually one of those best kept secrets that I don't know why people don't do more of. Uh, let me see if I have it here with me. Um, oh, shoot. I actually just used it in a demo, so I don't have it with me at the moment. But I will describe visually for you. Um, we absolutely sell with our ProMop kit. I'll make sure I just, I'll shoot the link right now. Uh, these lovely dust mop pads, any of our 18 heads. So whether you got our cinch mop off Amazon or the pro mop off our uh, main website, the, uh, the pro mop kit comes with two dust mop pads, the cinch mop, uh, also, uh, you can get these to go on any of our mop frames, any inch, any 18 inch frame you already have at home even. If you don't want to get a whole new frame and you just want to get better pads, you can just put our pads on any great Velcro. Our our hardware, we think it's amazing. But if you already have something and you're just looking to get a better quality pad, throw our pads or whatever you got. And when that wears out, get a better frame so we can take care of you long term. But even if just to tow your way into the industry, our dust pads are seriously chef's kiss best I've ever used. The center panel, just to show you again what that looks like, that center panel is teddy bear soft. I cannot describe how plush and dense and lovely that center panel is. So it picks up every bit of fine dust and um, uh, you know bits that are uh, accumulating in your house, pollen, you name it, up it comes. And then the strings along the edge are also really microfiber, 100%. So they catch all the big things, the Cheerio bits and the crumbs and the annoyance. So between the center panel and the rings, you can sweep with your mop. I see so many people out there with brooms. Why are you doing the brooms? You're not a witch. Stop that. Okay, this isn't Hocus Pocus. Put down the broom <laughs> and get a dry duster. The dry duster is so much easier and lighter and faster. You're not sitting there fighting with the dustpan and half the dust is going up in the air and a third of it maybe is going into the dustbin. It's a pain in the neck. Brooms don't work. Brooms knock half the dust up in the air, half the dust gets swept in the direction you want, none of it gets into the dustpan and everything gets kept, it's, keeps getting pressed into the grooves and the scratches of your floors, making them dingier and dirtier, especially if they're tile. If you use a dust mop, it actually holds and locks onto the dirt, no pressing down, and none of it gets kicked up in the air, completely removing the dirt and dust and bits without any kick up, without any press in, just removal. And that thing is perfectly light and silent. Um, a lot of people like to use uh, vacuums. Uh, I used to commercially as well, just because for scale, sometimes you need them for the acreage you need to cover. But especially if you're just cleaning your own home or if you're uh, in a residential situation where you can uh, easily swap pads, the dust mop is wonderful because it's silent and light. Instead of pulling out this big clunky vacuum and dragging it upstairs, dragging it downstairs, if you have an upright vacuum that has a spin brush that's going to scratch up your floors, you can skip all of that and just take your light little mop frame, slap on the dust mop pad and swish, 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 all the dust and junk is off your floors. Throw on the wet pad, mop, 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 and your floors are done in moments. So easy. Trust me, it is the only way to fly. Um, let's see here. Uh, someone mentioned that uh, rubbing alcohol is great for dried blood stains. Yes, rubbing alcohol will absolutely work as well. Um, the only thing to be mindful with uh, rubbing alcohol <coughs> is... It is strong enough to take out some dyes. So I would be slightly cautious about testing it on an area of the fabric you're trying to remove the blood stain from before you go ham with it on a visual spot. Um, if it is a, especially if it's a natural fibered item, um, because some natural dyes will actually lift and remove with rubbing alcohol. So just be mindful, try it somewhere. You don't want to lighten the area that you're trying to move the stain. So rubbing alcohol can be a great fix, but just be careful and test it in a spot so you know what you've got. Synthetics is usually like, like a polyester shirt, you're fine because that's color fast, but especially with natural fibers, you want to just be a little careful, okay? Um, let's see here. Some of my upholstery and area rugs say to use a solvent cleaner, no water. 
Others say water-based cleaner. Do we need these two different ones uh, to not damage fabrics? Great question, Jackie. So this is a big topic. Uh, I won't get into a lot of details about it, but it, you are 100% right. Um, big picture answer. Carpets can be made, I'm oh, sorry, carpets and upholstery can be made out of a ton of different fibers. Everyone thinks carpet's carpet or upholstery's upholstery. It ain't. Um, you can have wool carpet. You can have nylon carpet. You can have, you know, all manner of synthetic or natural fibers in your carpets and your upholstery. I've seen thing, things upholstered in a polyester type of fabric. I've seen things poly, um, upholstered in raw silk. It depends on what it's been upholstered or what your carpet's been made out of. And that's going to just decide the washing instructions. It is so important when you get a new piece of furniture or you get new carpets installed to find out what the heck it is you've got. If you're moving into a property that already has existing carpets, you need to ask as much as you can from the previous seller before they skedaddle, what's in this house? What do I have? Um, especially nice area rugs can be often very nice wools and things like that. And the rules for cleaning synthetic fabrics versus natural fabrics are often different. If you have some wonderful, gorgeous, imported Persian rug type of situation, there are rules about what soaps you can and cannot use. Um, most of the advice I'm giving, I'm presuming you have your, you know, call it basic everyday cheesy synthetic carpet. Um, and, you know, you could go grab the rug doctor down at the local grocery store and use your basic products on it and you're good to go. Same with the office chairs. I'm presuming you have the basic synthetic fabrics. But I realize some of our consumers may have some very wonderful, gorgeous high-end homes. And if you do and you have those high-end products, you got to take care of them by reading the labels. Um, and you are absolutely right that if you are taking care of a premium um, natural fibered uh, carpet or upholstery item or silk, what have you, solvent-based cleaners is basically, it's dry cleaning. So if you think about for your own clothing, you know how you can put some things in the washing machine and some things you have to take to the dry cleaner? The dry cleaner is using solvent-based cleaning chemicals. Uh, dry, dry cleaning isn't actually dry. It's a liquid. It's just not water. So you're putting the uh, dry clean fabric into uh, solvents and the solvents are dissolving out uh, the stains but without using water that is going to damage the fabric. So uh, solvent-based cleaning is basically dry cleaning for your carpet or upholstery. Um, and it's important to know which is which so you don't damage stuff. I will say once you get into that solvent type cleaning, more often than not, it's not a bad idea to have a professional treating that carpet. Um, most home consumers aren't great at managing chemicals they're not used to. When they get into the more, you know, I guess we call it commercially commercial stuff, I try to keep my suggestions pretty safe and in the middle of the lane, but some solvents can get pretty hardcore and cause some significant eye damage and respiratory issues. So when you get, start getting into the more, I guess we we'll call it dicey end of the commercial spectrum, don't be shy about reaching out to a professional, especially if you have some like gorgeous, gorgeous, you know, antique Persian rug or whatever it is. I don't want to see you trashing it because you decided to go ham on it yourself. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see. I got a question here. Let's see here. So I've so got a couple questions from Alka. I'm trying to understand here. Um, a fresh is no longer a Bork based product. Is that still your go to for cleaning washing machines? Great question. So um, a fresh has changed formulas some, but it's still a great product. At the end of the day, I think they um, were, you know, making some modest changes to it, but it still overall has some acid to it, some soap to it, and proper portioning. And that's why I like a fresh for cleaning out washing machines, is most consumers, when they are cleaning on their own, and they get the uh, DIY hacks from people online, put a cup of vinegar in your machine, put this in the machine, put that in the machine. They put way too much, and that ends up screwing up all of the hardware and the gaskets in the machine. Um, if you're going to try to DIY it, you need to use a minimal amount of acid to keep the hard water at bay in your washing machine. You don't need cups of vinegar in there. Um, at some point, you can start to actually 
screw up the mechanics of your machine, screw up uh, and cause rusting if there's a, if you have the old school painted um, tines. Uh, too much acid can actually break down that paint and cause r rusting faster. Uh, so if you're going to use a product to clean out your inside of your dishwasher, I prefer the ones that are in the ready-made tablets because it can make it uh, creates portion control so you guys don't overload your machine with too much acid and cause damage. Let's see here. Next question. Customer left me with the cat vial stain, bright yellow, on their light gray soft Italian leather couch. I started with Dawn dish and Dawn degrees and then vinegar, thinking, uh, thinking you've, you, uh, your science. Anything else? Honestly, if it's a leather couch, they need to bring in a leather specialist at this point. You've done, I know you're a professional cleaner and you're being really kind and generous trying to do things that are uh, adjacent to what you do. But as professional cleaners, it's okay sometimes to push back at our customers and say, I'm going to stay in my lane. Professional cleaners do maintenance cleaning. We're there to mop and to vacuum and to scrub your showers and to keep the house sanitary and healthy and beautiful on a regular basis. But sometimes people run into problems that now require restoration care. And that's not the house cleaner's problem. It's wonderful that you're trying to handle it. But at a certain point, if someone's done something really bad to something expensive, you don't want to try it. Because, for example, you're lucky hopefully it didn't go any worse than where you're at, but depending on the degreaser you picked, you could have caused some significant damage to that leather. Leather is a uh, natural material, it's animal skin, and it needs the oils in it to stay, to not dry out and become all brittle and fall apart. Um, degreasers usually have a significant amount of solvents to them. So if you used a heavy degreaser on a leather item, it's very possible that you could end up washing out all the natural oils of the animal hide and actually start to dry out that leather pretty significantly. So um, be wary of trying to DIY that type of an expensive piece unless you have some clear instructions somewhere from someone that's giving you, you know, that advice. Um, leather in particular is kind of a jerk, so I'd be careful, especially with that light-colored staining. Um, what I would tell them to do is to reach out to a leather professional at this point. Um, you can try cleaning it with a proper leather cleaner like a Lexol, but, but since you already tried all those other products, if it didn't come out with those, it's probably not going to come out with the Lexol either. The thing they can try as well, if it's, uh, is, uh, maybe let's see here. Uh, I can find this for you quick. So there are, um, yeah, I don't think they come in light gray. Let me just double check before I lie to you about what they Oh, they do have light gray. Okay. You know what? You might have an option here. All right. So here is what I'm going to tell you to have them buy for themselves, not you doing it. Okay. Because I don't want you taking on the liability. I think you as a professional cleaner have done your due diligence and trying and being really nice. But at a certain point, you get to set your own boundaries and saying, I'm not taking the legal liability for damage in your couch. Um, so the product you can point them at um, is this recoloring balm. So I just shot that into the comments. It's called Furniture Clinic's Leather Recoloring Balm. Um, that product is a good housekeeping seal for a reason. It's, it's pretty awesome. It's basically this tub of goop <laughs> that will help condition and recolor any damaged leather. Now, I'm a little worried about the fact that it's light gray. That has me concerned because light colors, when you add more pigment in a bomb, it might start to look darker in the section you worked on. So you'd have to, again, that's why I want to give it to them and tell them, hey, I found it from an expert. This is not a bad idea to try, but here's what they need to do. They need to take that couch, find a section. Usually a lot of couches don't have leather all the way around. They're kind of cheap about it. They hide it elsewhere, but if they got a good leather couch where there's leather in a spot you can't see, find some spot, crease or crevice where there's actually leather that no one can see, like behind a cushion or something, and take the product, rub it in there and let it dry and see how they like how it looks. Um, if it's darkening it and they don't like the new color, stop right there. 
if it's making it look good and nice and glossy and they enjoy how the leather looks, they can try they can try applying that balm over the now well washed area and see if it helps obscure that color. But again, at the end of the day, they may just need a professional to help them out here. Um, I don't want them trying anything more aggressive themselves or you and getting liable for it. But um, the leather recoloring balm for everyone that isn't fighting cat bile, leather recolor, leather recolor, uh, can't say it. Furniture clinics, leather recoloring balm. I can say it right now is a wonderful product for sad old leather, anything. So if you've got some sad old couch and some sad old chairs or some sad old shoes, um, this, you just rub right in and it's going to give it that nice, deep, rich color. Again, it's going to hide all that dried out and sad, uh, bare spots and cracks and scratches. It won't, if the leather is actually torn, you're done, obviously. But if it's just scratched up and sad and old, like, you know, you see all those pieces that people are putting up on a, you know, free cycle or a Facebook marketplace saying, oh, my old couch, who wants it? I often laugh at them going, dudes, if you'd spent 15 bucks on one of these bombs, you could have sold this thing for twice as much. It takes a hot two minutes to rub this in and make the couch look way better. Um, so for your stuff at home, the leather bomb, good stuff. And then you can keep it clean nicely with that Lexolide and the leather will, again, stay much happier, much longer. The more often you condition leather, the easier it is to clean and uh, less likely to take on deep stains. If your leather's dried out, it absorbs everything like a sponge. And then it's really hard to get stains out. Uh, let's see here. Um, let's see. You're not a witch. Stop it with the broom. Lol. That's going to echo the next time I see my broom. I'm telling you. I don't, uh, so this is a, this is a pet peeve of mine for everybody, my listeners. We are all running around with hundred plus year old advice in our heads when it comes to cleaning because nobody gets updated. Most of you aren't watching content like me before now. I wasn't available. So most people learn to clean from their parents and their parents learn to clean from their parents and their parents learn to clean from their parents. And there's no outside input except for the occasional commercial where somebody tells you about some sham wow, whatever nonsense they're trying to sell. And they're not trying to actually educate you. They're trying to peddle a product. So half the time that advice is nonsense. And half the time they don't explain to you why it's working. So you never learned and got smarter about what you're doing. And it means that people are walking around with a lot of really bad advice. Like we cling to brooms. Brooms are terrible for sweeping floors. They're great for maybe knocking some leaves off your front walkway, but there really isn't a more inefficient way to clean your internal floors than brooms. Um, dry dusting, vacuums with a horsehair brush attachment, like you know, that brush, soft brush attachment. All of these options are so much faster, safer for the floor, and more effective and clean your air better than a broom. A broom is ensuring the worst air quality and the least dirt removal and the most impregnating of soils deeper into the floor. It is literally the worst of all the worlds. So brooms go bye-bye. Um, dry dust or vacuum. Get rid of the broom and use it for the front stoop. Um, that goes with so many other things too. I see people, uh, I've got actually an article coming out, uh, hopefully that you guys will see. I did a whole thing on wood care um, where there's so many people taking horrible care of their wood because they're following great, great grandma's advice and they don't realize it because great grandma told grandma told grandma told them, here's how you take care of your wood. And no one along the chain said, Hey, the soaps have changed. The finishes have changed. Great grandma's advice is no longer relevant. Did you know that Murphy's oil soap was invented the same two year span as the Ford model T? That's right. You're taking advice on how to take care of your wood from people that were taking care of the Ford Model T, that old car, tiny car. You see people who were so excited because they didn't have to crank it anymore. That old car, that's the same year, okay, or like a year and a half off. So wood care has changed so much since then. Stop using 100 plus year old products to clean modern technology and surfaces. Modern wood, for example, is finished with polyurethane and does not need oil soap anymore. Oil soap will never soak into modern wood. Polyurethane is now a sealant. It actually protects the wood 
from moisture, which means that oil soap, the oils in it, cannot get to the wood. Everyone's like, oh, I'm using oil soap and pledge to nourish my wood. You're not nourishing diddly for squat. It's just sitting on top. It doesn't actually soak in. But again, nobody gets updated. They're not watching content like mine. And so they're going off a hundred plus year old advice. So please share this content, follow this content, share it to your friends. If you see them using nonsense products, call them on it and say, um, I, I, I know you think you're helping your floors right now, but you're actually making them worse. I got somebody you need to watch here. Sharing is caring. Okay, guys, get this information out there. And I'm not doing that just because I want you guys to go buy the microfiber, which I do. It's our amazing microfiber. And I, you know, I, I think it makes everything you clean easier. But at the end of the day, what I really want is to get rid of the nonsense out there. There's so much bad cleaning advice and I want to save you guys from it. Um, there's so many people making their jobs so much harder than they have to be, both professionally and at home. If you guys can get your services properly sealed and clean more frequently with high quality microfiber and some decent basic soaps, Clean doesn't have to be scary. It can be easy, but everyone makes it hard because they're scared of it and they wait till everything's gross. And then you have to jump into all those hard restoration products. The best advice I can give you from watching this line is stay updated with the highest new tech and clean more frequently. If you do those two things, everything's easier. Uh, let's see here. Thank you for that explanation. I will call a professional, but would like to know what I could use for a quick spill before it sets before someone can come and clean it? Great question. So you're not gonna like the answer, which is if you're working with a solvent-based anti-type product, you really shouldn't be trying to quick clean it yourself. Um, I would talk with your uh, carpet care person if they have any pro specialty products they wanna leave you a little bit with for the next time something goes wrong, and they might be willing to give you a suggested product or sample bottle. But if it's a uh, dry clean only type solvent based surface product, you shouldn't be trying to quick clean yourself. The one thing you can do is blot it up good. That is always safe. So if you've knocked something on there, um, your best bet is going to be to grab a good microfiber towel or whatever you've got and soak up as much of the stain as you can right away. Um, the more you leave in there, the more it's going to set. Um, and again, I would talk to, to whoever's caring for your carpet as to what they would allow for that fiber, that material, as a quick, clean fix. They may have some specialty products they're willing to leave you with. Um, but I'm not going to make any quick mentions here because depending on what you've got, they can be very fussy. And I don't want you having a situation where you've made a lighter color in certain parts of this, you know, beautiful print Persian rug because you, you know, tried to use, uh, you know, Tide on it. It's not going to work for the high-end stuff. Let's see here. So we are getting to the end of the hour. Um, and I want to quickly, first for our listeners, make sure I am sharing with you just one more time so everyone has it, their Fix Fail 15 promo code. We are not having a show next week. I am going on vacation because it's the 4th of July weekend and with my family. So there will not be a live next week. Uh, but that means you guys can store up lots of questions for me for the week after where we'll be back. Um, so, uh, you know, you use that time to peruse our website and buy some of the products we've been recommending and get cleaning. Um, in this episode, though, I want to end with a couple of fixes I didn't mention real fast. For those that were holding out for fixes, I want to make sure I mention them because we did make sure this is a cleaning fail episode. We didn't mention a couple of my favorites. We got so embroiled in the questions. So a couple quick fixes. I want to make sure you know you can fix. Um, fix number one, I want to shamelessly plug. If you've screwed up your stainless steel appliances, actually, sorry, I'll show this in a second. If you've screwed up your stainless steel appliances, you can fix them. Lots of people scratch their stainless steel, either cleaning or just moving magnets around on their fridge or lifting the grates up on their stove when they're trying to clean and they leave these scratches. The trick is your cordless drill. Grab your cordless drill, charge it up and get yourself the buffing wheel and compound polishing kit from steel. There's three pads in it. You'll see there's two yellow and a white. Mark them off, count them one, two, three, right on the side of the Sharpie, one, two, three, so you don't get them mixed up because that's going to correspond to your compound. The compounds go from dark to light in terms of strength. The black is really hardcore. You don't want to use it unless you absolutely have to. 
the gray is reasonable and the uh, uh, the lightest one is your fine shiny finished one. What this allows you to do is the buffing wheel spins in this big wheel shape, right? If you turn the drill on its side, you now get that wheel going this way. And now you've got a buffing straight line. The big mistake I see people doing when they try to fix stainless steel scratches is they grab some sort of buffing pad that goes in a circle this way. And now they're making these whirl marks and these big swirls on their stainless steel. Stainless steel goes in a straight grain. You can't buff it with something going this way if you want to remove material and take it down past the scratch. If you want to remove material past the scratch, you've got to go in the direction of the grain, which means the, you, you need the buffing wheel going this a ways, okay? See my wheel this way? That's what you want it so that you get that straight scratch cross. You put the buffing compound on the side of the wheel and you go in straight lines with the grain, okay? And that's going to help uh, either obscure or completely remove, depending on how bad your scratch is, the scratches. Now, be aware, though, you're removing material when you use polish and compound. So you may have to go over the front of the whole appliance. That's why you want to make sure your batteries are charged. Check in an obscure spot first to make sure you like how it looks. It may change the grade slightly, but it's better than a bunch of big scratches. So if it's, you know, changing the, the you know, from a satin to a glow or a glow to a satin and you're not happy, you may want to back off and ask the professional. But if it's within the range of like, oh, I like how this looks. Cool. Use the compound, go back and forth. So I suggest starting with the lightest one first because that makes very little difference. And that way, if it works, then you didn't do any damage to the overall grain pattern and you're just good to go. If that's not enough, change wheels from the, the white uh, pad is the softest, goes with the softest finish. The yellow pads go with the harder ones, the, the gray and the black. So start with the white, try it. If it worked, awesome. If it didn't work, jump up to the light gray, try that. If it worked, awesome. If not, jump up to the black, try that. Get it as best you can. Then you have to walk your way back down the steps. So if you're at black, you have to try a gray again to smooth out more and then white to really finish it up. That's why you want the drill with a charged battery. But if you go over it and you finish it up, you're going to actually get that scratch removed and a nice glossy shine without having to replace your uh, stovetop or your fridge or your uh, dishwasher. It's a great fix. The other last great fix I will shamelessly plug is a lot of you have screwed up your bronze and copper sinks. Um, everyone has those gorgeous uh darkened bronze and darkened uh uh copper sinks and they have these gorgeous patinas on them and oh no you used some sort of hard water cleaner on it and you've now stripped off the patina and it looks like a shiny penny bright copper or you were using your kitchen sink and you used lemonade in there and you stripped off all the patina and now it's bright as a you know shiny copper penny what do i do don't panic you can re-darken it in the factory, when they darken um, bronze and uh, 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 copper, they're using a, a darkening chemical. Jax is the brand. So Jax uh, Copper Patina Darkener. Uh, it works for brass, for, for, for brass, bronze, and copper. So it's just a uh, liquid product. Uh, you're going to clean that bronze or copper sink well. And... You're going to try to use whatever it was that you lightened things with to like kind of smooth it out so it's a little like, so it's not such a sharp little line. You want to kind of like blend it a little bit so that it's not such a sh sharp relief. So if like, for example, you used like Barkeeper's Friend by accident, don't use that, it, by the way, in a uh, uh, patina copper sink. Something like Barkeeper's Friend is going to strip that patina. But if you used it by mistake and now it's like a bright penny, make sure you even out that area so it's kind of like blends and feathers into the part that's still dark. Get that blended. Then go ahead and take the jacks on a cotton pad and tap, 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 tap. Wait a couple of seconds, wipe it off. If it's not dark enough, tap, 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 tap. Wait a little while, dog, wipe it off. And you're kind of playing artist, trying to get it darkening to the level you like, and it blends in with everything else. And you tap it, you tap it until you're happy with everything's kind of blended in, like makeup. Okay, you're blending it in. Once it's good, you wipe it off. Follow the instructions on the bottle to stop the reaction. Once everything's good and darkened and it's not reacting anymore, and you're clean and you're dry. The thing you want to do to keep that from happening again is use a product like Protect-A-Clear. But Protect-A-Clear is a metal sealant. It is no joke. You do have to like clean it really well. And this is a permanent sealant. You need to be uh, careful with the paintbrush and do it right. But I can now seal in that patina exactly how it looks forever. And I don't have to worry about it anymore. Um, you can do this on things like... Um, if you have fine silver somewhere that you are constantly polishing, you polish it one last time, 
you know, these old kettle sticks or whatever, polish them till they shine, paint them in Protective Clear, and boom, I never have to polish them again because now they're sealed in. Um, so Protective Clear is your friend for uh, tarnishing jewelry, tarnishing sinks, tarnishing anything that you want to keep nice and bright. Um, and the last one, I cannot finish a, a DIY mistakes episode without at least mentioning once Howard Restore Finish. Where's the product? Because I want to make sure I add on my favy. So when it comes to mistakes that you will make in cleaning, so many of them involve wood. And wood, here we are, is the product I want to show you here. Howard Restore Finish is your go-to for any dumb thing you've done to wood. Again, I can't stress enough. Howard Restore Finish is the, your go-to for every dumb thing you've done to wood. Scratches, watermarks from uh, cups and glasses, watermarks from leaving rags out accidentally and causing damage marks. Any dumb thing you've done to wood, Howard Restore Finish is going to save your bacon. They make it in a zillion shades. Find the one that matches your wood. If it is a water-based stain, like a, a watering, I recommend hit, hitting the surface with a hairdryer while you rub it in. That will help evaporate out some of the water while the product forces itself into the finish. It will repair scratches. It will repair water stains. It will rejuvenate the look of the wood. It, it, it's chef's kiss, trust me. It is a can you need. And one last mistake, so I can say I helped everybody today, is Lustro Italiano Etch Remover. If you own marble in your life, Get this bottle now and put it under your sink because inevitably at some point you will screw up your marble or your stone, any acid sensitive stone. Um, if I recall, it works on a number of them. Um, it, I don't think it's strong enough for granite, but uh, there's a lot of uh, softer stones it does work on. It has a list right on the jar, uh, but I definitely know it does marble. If you get acid on marble, it dulls it. If you accidentally use an acid-based bathroom cleaner and get that spray on someone's bathroom vanity, now they got all these little dull spots on the vanity from all the acid. Don't panic. Get your Luster Italiano and buff it in with a microfiber towel and poof magic, it takes out the etching. It is wonderful. Now, if you've etched so deep that you can feel like your nail like dig into a divot, that's not going to work. You're going to have to have a professional come out and regrade and hone that marble and pay the bill, Okay. But if it's just basic bathroom cleaner where you dulled it, I've seen this in professional cleaning all the time. People accidentally use some hard water cleaner and they get it on their stone and they're all crying. Don't worry. Luster Italian Alano's got you. Buff that in. Um, actually, you can also use that with a buffer on electric, um, a cordless drill. So if you have a lot of area to fix, cordless drill, Luster Italiano, get the goop on the end and, and you will be so much happier with how your marble looks. Um, again, though, just like with the copper situation, if you have damaged your marble, it's probably because it's not sealed properly. Your next step after you fix the etching is to remember to use some sort of sealant on your stone. Get it bone dry and get it sealed. And if you're not willing to do that because you just you know don't have the time, at least use a additive product. So like this, for example, is the Black Diamond Stone Care line. Excellent line. They make a whole bunch of intensive cleaners and sealants. But they make this two-in-one granite cleaner and sealer. This is the lazy man's answer to granite countertops. It allows you to clean and to constantly replenish your seal. It is not as good as a true thick sealant, but if you got sealed and you're just trying to maintain it and you don't feel like having to reseal it all the time, this product adds a little bit of sealant every time you use it. So it buys you some grace and gives you at least some protection if you're too lazy to get the whole big you know, sealant process done. So those are the products I want to make sure I gave you guys. So now you've got your hints to solve some of your best cleaning oopsies. And the way to best way to avoid those cleaning oopsies going forward is to like, subscribe, and follow me. I'm here to help. I'm going to give you the advice so you don't make these mistakes anymore, okay? Just not next week because I'm going on vacation. So thank you, everybody, for joining. It's been a lot of fun, a lot of great questions. Um, make sure to uh, like, subscribe, and follow. And if you have any questions between now and then, don't be shy and send an email to askacleaningexpert at microfiberwholesale.com or go on to any of our posts and po po uh, comment uh, in our posts a question. I will gladly hop into our comments and answer you right away or DM us on Facebook or YouTube or Instagram. We get those messages and I can answer those too. We are accessible any way you need us. We are here to serve. Um, I will be gone for like a long weekend, so not too long, I promise. So any questions you've got, we'll get to them quickly and make sure you can be the best cleaner you can be. 
We look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Bye, you guys.